Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you a fantastic attacking game played by Scottish American chess master George Henry Mackenzie. Mackenzie is on the white side and his opponent is Irish chess master James Mason. The game was played in 1878 in Paris. But before starting our game, as usual, first want to sharpen your tactical skills. Please take a look at this position and try to find the winning line for black. It's black to move and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Back to our main board and now without further ado let's get started with this fascinating game and see what happened on the board. Mackenzie opened up with e4 and Mason responded with e6. Black goes for French defense, d4, d5, knight c3, knight f6 and with e takes d5. White goes for the delayed exchange variation. It takes d5 by black, knight f3, bishop d6. I have to tell you that this exchange variation usually leads to boring positions, but James Mason's early mistake will give birth to a ferocious attack. Let's see what's going to happen next. In here we have castling by both sides, knight c6, bishop g5, and it was in here that Mason made that fatal mistake and played knight e7. This is very surprising, you know. I have to tell you that Mason was ranked the number one player in the world during 11 separate months between August 1877 and June 1878. And a typical move made by him is, yes, really, really very surprising. With this move, Black is allowing White to capture on f6 and damage his pawn structure on the king side. Probably Mason was thinking that by playing at knight g6, he can neutralize white's attack, but this is a terrible idea, yes, a very terrible move. And now let's see, how is white's attack going to escalate? Knight h4 was played, king g7, and there it goes, queen h5. This is simple, guys, suddenly white pieces got very active. Rook h8 was played, f4, at some point this... White rook can join the attack as well. c6 was played, rook f3, knight g6, rook f1, queen c7. Black intensified the pressure on f4, that's why in here we have knight e2, bishop d7, knight g3 and rook g8. This is a move which allows white to mate black king in 6. But even if not rook a g8 already, at this point, Black's position is totally lost. In here, of course, you can't even capture on f4 because of this knight f5 check. And yes, in the end of the day, white can successfully exploit the weaknesses of the dark squares. And already after knight g3, yes, the threat of knight f5 is very unpleasant for black, followed by queen h6. In our game we have rook g8 and as we have reached the critical position, please pause the video and try to find the winning move for white. Maybe it will even be better to say try to find the mating combination. So have you already found that brilliant king hunt? Let's see what's going to happen next. Now look, by playing rook g8, black is planning to play king f8 and bring his king on a safer square, probably Mason was hoping to bring his king on the queen side, with which he could have solved all the problems, but in here, George Henry Mackenzie delivered the surprise and he went for a queen sacrifice. Look at this, guys. With this queen sacrifice, white forces the enemy king to journey forth into his camp, where of course black king will be shown no mercy. All black could do was to accept the queen sacrifice after which we have knight f5 check. Bishop takes f5, knight takes f5 check, king h5, g4 check. Instead of playing g4 I have to tell you that rook h3 check is equally strong in both cases. White is checkmating black king in 3. In here white can either deliver a checkmate from h6 or from e3. Let's go back but in our game after king h5 we have g4 check. King takes g4, rook g3 check, king h5 and finally we have it. A checkmate is on the board after bishop e2. Truly a spectacular final combination which I hope that you enjoyed greatly. In the end here are more suggestions for you, feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care!